For this project, I'm going to show you how to make Proto Putty. Proto Putty is a cool moldable dough that you can press into nearly any shape, but after 10 minutes, it magically turns to rubber. Bouncy, stretchy rubber. All you need for this project is a box of food coloring, a tub of cornstarch, and a tube of 100% silicone. It's extremely important you get silicone number one, and while you're here, double check your tube is marked 100% silicone just to be sure. Now to minimize the mess we're about to make, it's going to be helpful to have two disposable paper bowls on hand. Grab some of the food coloring and squirt a generous amount into one of the bowls, remembering that the more you use, the richer your proto putty color will become. The silicone caulking goes in next, so carefully squeeze a big blob of it directly into the food coloring until you feel like you've got enough. But keep in mind that silicone number one releases acetic acid vapors while curing and smells so strongly of vinegar that it'll make your nostrils sting. So you might want to think about mixing this up outside, or at least in a well-ventilated area. Use something like a popsicle stick to slowly fold the silicone and food coloring together and make sure you don't mix it too quickly or it might splash out and stain your clothes. You'll be able to tell when the two components are combined because they blend nicely into a solid and uniform color. Now it's important to note that as soon as the food coloring is mixed, the clock is ticking and we've only got about 10 minutes of work time before this all starts hardening up. But the problem is this stuff's ridiculously sticky and extremely difficult to work with. But if you drop the blob into a big bowl of cornstarch, then generously coat the outside with powder, the silicone becomes a lot easier to deal with because the powder prevents it from sticking to anything. Now if you don't want to turn your hands different colors or end up with super sticky fingers, now is the time to put on a pair of disposable gloves. Of course, gloves are optional for anyone feeling adventurous, but you may regret not using them, just saying. Flatten the silicone blob down into the cornstarch, then flip it over a few times, kneading it into different shapes and repeating the process about 10 to 15 times. This will help tame the sticky nature of the mess and make it a lot more manageable to work with. Now, if any part of the silicone starts feeling sticky again, just coat it with more cornstarch and repeat the process until it loses all of its tackiness. After around two minutes of kneading the cornstarch in, the color of your silicone putty should brighten back up and start feeling a lot like Play-Doh. When it's thoroughly mixed to the point where it doesn't stick to your hands anymore, the proto putty is finished and ready for immediate use. You can mold it, squish it, or press it into whatever shape you want. Just remember, you've only got five to 10 minutes of work time before it turns to rubber, so whatever you're doing, make sure you do it quickly. I tried making impressions of some stackable plastic bricks, and you can see that after only 15 minutes, the rubber is already so stiff we can pull it out of the mold. Popping the bricks out, you can see they left a perfect impression in the putty and created a fun little mold that looks remarkably similar to the kind I made in a previous video. The final product is extremely stretchy, very rubbery, and amazingly durable as well. Now this idea works because general purpose silicone is activated by moisture. So by blending in a generous amount of food coloring, the silicone gets triggered and instantly begins the curing process. Just for fun, I squished up a ball of leftover putty and watched it harden into an interesting ergonomic stress ball made just for me. And perhaps this would be a quick and easy way to make a custom pair of rubber handle grips as well. Now if you want to have even more fun with your proto putty, try mixing a batch with neon food coloring instead. I used neon green to make a batch and press it over an acrylic mold I designed for a different project, then gently wrap the edges up around the sides to let it set. 20 minutes later, you can see the rubber is cured and we've got ourselves a cool little mold for making custom bars of soap. I formed another chunk into a hook shape and pressed it onto my wall to make an improvised key hook for hanging car keys. I made a clip for my workbench to prevent power cables from pulling out of place, and I even tried wrapping some around a fork to make an ergonomic handle grip that fits the shape of my hand perfectly. Now I was curious to see what the proto putty would do if we didn't use any cornstarch at all, so I whipped up another big batch and slopped it straight into the mold. Surprisingly, it still only took about 20 minutes to completely set up into a version even stretchier and perhaps even more durable and resilient than it was before. The problem is that without cornstarch, it's difficult to work with and really hard to remove air bubbles trapped at the bottom. Now check this out, if you want to fuse two of your rubber creations together, all you need is a dab of fresh proto putty to bind them. Press the pieces together, let the putty cure, and just like that, the two have become one. Proto Putty is a fun rubber that's surprisingly bouncy, which means you can make rubber toys, roll your own bouncy balls, or make just about anything else you can think of. I tried rolling a piece of yellow putty into a loop and turned it into a custom silicone wristband, then pressed another piece into a taco shape, which made a custom rubber base for watching movies on my smartphone. This quick and dirty pinch pot is great for storing paper clips at the office, and I even tried making a screw-on lid for mason jars, which is easy to use and surprisingly watertight as well. Proto Putty is fairly stretchy in general, but the thicker you make it, the more durable it's going to be. It works great for impression casting, like making half molds of little glass bottles, but if you're tempted to use it for making custom candy molds, you might want to reconsider. 
Construction silicone can be harmful if swallowed and can cause serious side effects if it gets inside your body. So rather than using it to make candy molds, it's probably better just to make toys, crayons, or little rubber erasers instead. Well now you know how to use a few simple and very common materials to make huge batches of protoputty on a budget. So you can channel your power of creation and make anything you want. By the way, there's a different kind of food grade silicone you can use for making candies, and I'll put a link in the description to where you can find it. Well, that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com.